Hey YouTube friends and family. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. First and foremost, I want to thank each and every one of you for the great comments that I've gotten on my last video. The video pertaining to the trucker strike. October 11th through 13th is the plan. Down in the show more of that video, I provided a link that would take you directly to the trucker's site or page, if you will, on Facebook, thereby giving you the opportunity to see exactly what's going on with the truckers. What I have found, uh, especially through one comment source, where we've had a bit of a argument, if you will, between me and that person. And you're welcome to go to that video and you can read the comment yourself. Um, ignorance is bliss, bliss. I say ignorance, not meaning that anybody's stupid, because that's not the meaning of ignorance. Although in many applications, people misuse the word to imply that somebody is stupid. Ignorance, in my opinion, in every def definition of the word, is that somebody's lacking information pertinent to whatever topic it is that they're trying to communicate about, trying to dispute, or trying to enforce. Ignorance is something that can really hurt communication. When a person wants to know something, they should always take the time to research and or go to a source that has the information that they want. In this case, it would be the Facebook page where the truckers have set up their own informative area and clearly the very first thing they say on that page, after a great picture of an 18-wheeler, I might add, is the American people are sick and tired of the corruption that is destroying America. We therefore declare a general strike on the weekend of October 11th through 13th, 2013. Truck drivers will not haul freight. Americans can strike in solidarity with the truck drivers. Now, friends, I also put that in the show more of the last video. This will be the third video that I have done pertaining to this strike. I have a strong passion for this. Not because Hammer drove truck for 35 plus years, but because my father drove truck. And because I have been associated with the trucking industry for years, myself, in one application or another, even as a consumer of grocery goods, just like you. You know, they say... If you've got it, a trucker brought it. Has anybody heard that? I can remember rolling down the highways and seeing handmade, homemade billboards with that statement on it. Certainly have. You know, the problem is bringing those goods to Americans has become increasingly expensive for the truckers. The cost of fuel, especially for the independent truckers, can bury them, can bring them to ruins in little or no time at all. We have to remember that there's 18 tires on that truck and trailer, and those tires need to be replaced they need to be kept in good shape. A bad tire on a big rig is not a good thing. 
They have maintenance on those trucks that has to be done constantly. Very expensive, I might add. Just the oil alone for a big rig takes a big penny. Or should I say a big dime. They've got insurance. And believe me, insurance companies love truckers. They certainly do. They have road fees. They have cost. In so many areas, you wouldn't believe it. Licensing for every state that they're going to be rolling through and delivering to. Now there's states that are implementing a mile tax. So every mile driven is going to be taxed. The list goes on and on. And truckers will be put out of business. They certainly will. You know, back in 1979, actually it began before that, in uh, the early 70s, I'll start there, there was a lot of turmoil in the world. The Middle East, which, I mean, controlled the oil industry, what's new, uh, was going through a war, and it was the Arab-Israeli uh, war. The Arab members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, which is known as OPEC, O-P-E-C, you guys are familiar with that. Well, those members of, of the Arab uh, OPEC were not pleased with the United States government's decision to send more supplies to the Israeli army. And boy, to show their displeasure, they implemented an oil embargo against any country that supported the Israeli army in any way, shape, or form. Well, Nixon was president at that time. Now think about this. Really pay close attention here. Nixon was the president. What is he most known for? Does Watergate ring a bell? Corruption was thick then too, guys. It certainly was. And Nixon, being president at the time, was pushing real hard at the same time that this OPEC thing was going on for the 55 mile per hour speed limit that you see on most freeways and highways. Now let's keep in mind that the truckers also live by a very tight time clock, a schedule. A lot of the goods that they pick up have got to be delivered in a specific time to ensure that they're still fresh, that they're still good for you. So 55 slowed them down. On top of that, the fuel prices were choking them to death, along with the cost of living that was at a terrible rise during that period of time. I remember it very well. Well, it turned out ugly. You know, the team, Teamsters jumped in for the benefit of the uh, union truckers. They uh, put together a strike. And independent truckers, <laughs> there was over a hundred thousand, I believe, when I read about it, uh, that stopped driving in the summer of 1979. Now, the negotiations and the problems that were taking place with the Union truck drivers, and the fact that the independents finally quit driving. They just parked their trucks. They would park right in front of a load waiting to go out, but they refused to take that load. And they did it because they couldn't afford to. The diesel fuel had hit such a soaring height 
that the truckers couldn't afford to fuel their trucks to go the hundreds of miles or thousand of miles that they needed to go. The big problem was that this this became a war between the uh, union truckers and the independent truckers. And the people of the United States, the people of America, had no clue. All they cared about was that they, they could go into their supermarket or their grocery stores and they could buy whatever it was they wanted, not giving a thought of how it got on the shelf, not having a clue what that product went through to get on the shelf, and having no information. Now, why didn't they have information? Well, the truckers used the CB. They certainly did. The wonderful CB radio. That was their form of communication. They didn't have cell phones. They certainly didn't. They didn't have internet, my friends. But neither did the people. People didn't have this wonderful tool of the internet. So what the people had to do is they had to put all their faith in mainstream media. Yes, they put their faith in mainstream media. Now, what did they hear on mainstream media? Well, there was reels and reels and reels going through ABC, NBC, CBS. Uh, I don't remember if CNN and Fox were even around then. You'd have to look that up. But there wasn't near as many as there is today that were out there broadcasting. Uh, many of them, you know, merged later. And I think that's how CNN became CNN, but I'm not sure. You'd have to look it up. I'm not an authority on this stuff. I'm just sharing what I do know. Oh, Bob Schaefer, 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 whatever his name was, um, got on the news and he was broadcasting, you know, uh, this was on CBS News on uh, June 16th of 1979, convoys of striking independent truckers protesting high diesel fuel prices reported, causing products to spoil and go to waste, food rotting on the docks. Well, this is what the people were hearing, and all they could see in their minds was their grocery store not having food? Well, those damn truckers. They're trying to kill America. They're trying to ruin America. They're, they're trying to ruin us. So the people were not behind the truckers either. And why? Because they didn't have the information they needed. They didn't know what it was all about. They didn't understand it. They couldn't see that what the truckers was doing or what they were trying to do was to help America. Friends, that's a fact. You know, whether it was a deliberate act uh, on the part of our government, who will ever know? You know, what we do know is that the news about rotting food and supplies going to waste because the big, big bad truckers we're destroying America, hurting the people. Nay, 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 my friends. Not so. Not so at all. Sorely mistaken. But those days are gone. Those days are gone. You know, that CB, that wonderful CB, not unlike your cell phones today and this great internet, was a source of communication. Sad thing is, it was the only source that they had at that time to get what information they could out. Now, I can tell you as a family of truckers, we supported the truckers. The independent trucker needed to be supported because they were killing them putting them out of business. The CB quickly became 
a weapon used against the truckers. We had RCB on all the time and we could hear the death threats. People getting on the CB, breaking breaker breaker one night. And they'd be hollering at a trucker, you know, better not sleep tonight. We're going to blow your effing truck up, you know, we're slashing your tires. Truckers, I mean, truck, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So the one source of communication that the truckers had was being used against them by ignorant people. Ignorant people. People that did not have the information they needed to understand what was happening. Today, not so. We've got this internet. And we need to utilize it in the best way we can. Again, down in the show more, I'm going to put the link. Anybody that has a question about what I'm saying, all you need to do to find out what this is about is click the link and go to the Facebook page. Truckers to shut down America. Now, do they mean shut down America to hurt you and me? Absolutely not. If you're not fed up with a corrupt government and the high cost of living, the low income, the cut hours, the jobless situation, the high fuel cost, if you're not fed up with it, I'll tell you something, friends. Squawk about people on food stamps. Who put them on the food stamps? Who pushed them into the position where they have to swallow their pride and walk in and beg for half enough food stamps to feed their family for one month? What's happened that's caused that? Think about it. And these truckers are not in good shape. We lose our truckers. You're not going to have squat on your shelves. Except maybe what the government decides to put on your shelf. And I'd be real cautious about eating any of that. GMO ring a bell. Friends, I'm telling you. We have the web now, not just a CB. We have cell phones. We have communication that is valuable. It's a blessing. The communication we have today is a blessing. All you have to do is pick up that little mouse. That little mouse. And click it. Now somebody took real offense when I said that earlier. I didn't mean it offensively. I don't mean to offend anybody. And any of you that know me know that. I love everyone. But to have someone mean to me and call me names because they're ignorant of the facts and all they had to do was click a link and read. Well, I take offense of that. I certainly do. If you care about America, if you care about the well-being of your family, if you care about what's happening at all, then you need to click that link and you need to stand up and back these truckers. You certainly do, my friends, because it's the truth. If you've got it, a truck brought it. They need our support, friends and family. They certainly do. They're good old boys and girls. Yeah, they certainly are. Great big hugs and a whole bunch of love. And hey, truckers, don't you forget my jelly beans. I'll see you the next go around. For now, we're over and out.